Charles Daniel Bennett, a.k.a. Crazy Horse, RKA Felony, born November 23rd, 1979. Let's take a break from the basketball stories and focus on a peculiar but interesting individual with a crazy one himself. On one hand, you have one of the best natural fighters you'll ever see that possessed an athleticism and power rarely seen in a guy just 5'5", five five, with the potential to become legendary in mixed martial arts leading to an outstanding career in the UFC. But on the other hand is a troubled human being in need of lots of trauma correction and guidance he could trust. Two things he never had in his life. Both his parents were hooked on crack cocaine during the devastating cocaine 80s and for the most part Charles and his 10 siblings were there to see it all. It was a tragic time for lower class communities who thought they were using a drug that could give them a short break from their environment and responsibilities and since everyone was doing it, how bad could it be? What they didn't know was that drug was a mixture that ate away from them from the inside out and they would never really leave their environment or responsibilities. Instead, be so high, they didn't realize there was no escaping reality, only numbing yourself to it and blocking out the people that care about you and the ones you're supposed to care for. There wasn't much care in Charles Bennett's environment at a young age and it led to him losing other athletic opportunities and eventually dropping out of high school altogether his junior year after his father kicked him out the house. He was too disruptive, likely seeking the attention he craved but never knew how to channel. Speaking of attention, Bennett was also a natural entertainer that for good or bad belonged in front of the camera. Every moment there was one on him, he shined in front of it, gold teeth under his mouthpiece with a huge smile and antics you'd think a character straight out of a movie. For those hip-hop heads that remember the late old dirty bastard, Charles Crazy Horse aka Felony Bennett was to MMA what Dirty was to rap, a character who was supremely gifted but because of his life experiences turned him into glimpses of the star he could have been. He was arrested 14 times from 99 to 2009 for everything including burglary, assault, dealing and possessing illegal substances that helped shorten his career and robbed him of his potential. In the end, Bennett finished his career with a losing record that doesn't quite tell the complete crazy stunted growth story of the best that never made it for these reasons. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Charles Bennett is a former mixed martial arts fighter from Gainesville, Florida that as mentioned, wasn't dealt a hand you're supposed to win. As the oldest boy of 11 children, whose parents were both drug addicts, a lot of pressure, resentment, and anger flowed through a young Bennett. He saw his mother use drugs, then be arrested and go to jail at 8 years old causing him to have to move in with his father who was also a user. Outside the home, he would always have to fight because of his small size to prove himself, which is where he took his anger from his home life out on and where he learned that life was impossible as he says to survive being dealt such a bad hand. After his father kicked him out the house in high school, he dropped out and started selling drugs himself. He'd be arrested for that and assault and battery a few times before he found a headline in the newspaper looking for fighters to come train at the local gym. Needing any lifeline and way to take care of his newborn child, he jumped at the opportunity to change his life. Stun number one, never taking it seriously. In his own words, Bennett told Bleacher Report that another reason he got into organized fighting was he saw it as not just a way to make money, but also where he could be aggressive and angry without having to worry about the police. He realized he could get legal dope money essentially, so why not give it a try? It's understandable to see initially he wasn't as focused and disciplined as he needed to be, but over the course of his career and life it seems for him, nothing was ever as serious as the world made it out to be and while I agree to some extent, this was a real chance for him seeing as not many people ever find their true calling in life and he did. With that and the natural raw ability he had, 
Not to mention being in it at a young age, he could have done outstanding things at the top level of the UFC. What made matters worse? Not taking things seriously was also a part of the selling point of Charles Felony Bennett. He was a jokester, an antagonist with a unique sense of humor and would say and do things his mind thought of in the spur of the moment. That kind of entertainment ability in one person is highly coveted and caused Charles Bennett to continue being the person promoters were craving to book. He was like an act in a circus who understood what the people wanted from him and as long as it could pay for his marijuana addiction and provide for his kids, he was excited to tap dance and be a nigga that runs fast. I'm a nigger and I run fast. For a guy with the nickname Crazy Horse or much worse Felony, you could imagine all the trouble he got into outside the ring. Even with a career start, Bennett was still selling drugs and smoking Mary Jane, relaxing post-fights when he should have been training and making sure he was ready for the life of a fighter. It led to him losing many fights, one to TKO due to exhaustion in 2001, losing three of his first six fights. But what they were was entertaining, so he was getting booked like crazy and aided his negative behavior that built his persona in the ring. Stun number two, his losing record. As the old adage goes, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, and Charles Bennett's career was the perfect example of that. He refused to work on his talents through training and disciplines like rest and a quality diet. What's interesting is he got to see what hard work could do after he decided to stop the crazy diet and partying and focus on going to the gym and training, winning his next 9 of 10 fights, now 12 and 4 in his first 16. But the life pressures got too much along with continuously going back to his past environments and he began allowing his training to fall off once again. He didn't have the in-ring skills his trained opponents had and would lose to much inferior opponents, many of them who never became known fighters themselves. He began being a target of submission, tapping out so much that betting on his fights ending in submission would be a smart choice. By 2005, he had won 16 fights and lost 8 of them, with 2 ending in a draw. As you know, to the victor goes the spoils, an ability to brag and earn camera time. Well, Bennett's personality and exposure were suppressed simply because he wasn't winning enough to be talked about. After his August 5, 2005 draw against Victor Valenzuela, he lost 6 of the next 7 and at one point losing 16 fights in a row. These losses added up to an astonishing 31 wins and 46 losses, therefore his fights weren't being booked at the level that brings in the real money and he settled for taking backyard fights and ones against unknown opponents at random events all over the world. Stunt number three, locking in too late. In sports, many athletes don't understand that there is such a thing as taking what you do seriously at the wrong time. That's the thing about success and opportunity. They wait for no man and may only come around one time in that form. Because the body ages, then peaks, then starts to go downhill at some point athletically, it's important we understand that and take our discipline seriously or it could lead to a situation like Charles Bennett where now that you're ready, the world has moved past the excitement to see you perform. Bennett would eventually start taking training seriously again after understanding later that this would be one of his only ways to take care of his two kids. But in that later career, he was a shell of who he once was and it was obvious that his best years were behind him. Years where he was knocking out world-class names like Wanderlei Silva. Years where he was knocking out a world-class name like Wanderlei Silva, who he had beef with in 2005. After a fight, Bennett wandered into Silva's locker room and immediately got into it with his trainer. The trainer choked Bennett out before he came back to conscious and was being pushed out of the room by Silva himself. As he was pushing, Bennett swung on him and knocked him out. Wandelay denied this for years until video was released. That ordeal led to Bennett's best performance of all time. Because he was too small to fight Wandelay in the ring, Silva's team put their kickboxing protege up to fight Bennett 
and in seven seconds the fight in Japan was over. Bennett caught Minoru Kimura square in the face while he was trying to set up a knee to the face move. It dropped Kimura and Charles punished him until the ref stopped the fight. It was the best performance of his life where his complete potential shined through. Had he been serious and focused like this his entire career, he could have rode that moment alone to millions and much more success. All in all, Charles Bennett made it further than anyone that knew him expected, so all wasn't lost of course. He got to take care of his kids in the only way he knew how, and was great for sports and entertainment as long as he was around. But in my opinion, we never got to see the real Charles Bennett, where had it not been for these reasons, he could have been an all-time great. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out. See me? I'm a nigger, and I run fast.